Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metal Nation and of course Access joining us today, Zach and Rex Cox of Uncured. How are you guys doing, man? We're doing very well. Thank you for asking. How about yourself? I am doing fantastic. You guys have so much going on. It, it's, there's got to be a lot of excitement in the Uncured world right now. Yeah, we're uh, really thrilled to be going out with Devil Driver in just a few weeks. And then, of course, Children of Bodom in a few months, uh, November and December. So we can't recite. And thank you. Absolutely. And we're going to talk a little bit about those tours in a bit. But first... For everybody who has yet to experience Uncured, bring the listeners up to speed. Give us a little backstory on the band. Our Uncured is a uh, progressive death metal band. We are a four-piece. Well, I'm Rex Cox. I play guitar and sing. Uh, Zach plays guitar and he sings. We have John Keita on bass. He played guitar in Diecast for 15 years. And we have Liam Manley on drums, who's a uh, 22-year-old drummer from Portland, Oregon. Now, your guys' sound encompasses several styles. Who were sort of your guys' primary influences for your writing and for your playing style? Uh, We've been um, influenced by a wide variety of bands, and the the first band we always reference would be Opeth, primarily because of their ability to combine very heavy, brutal parts with softer, melodic parts. And, you know, in in the older Opeth material, there's it's uh, all primarily heavy, but mixed in with melodic sections, so their writing philosophies carry over into a lot of hours, even though musically don't sound totally similar. Also, we're very inspired by uh, Jeff Loomis and John Petrucci because we see them as two, like the two best guitarists on the in the uh, metal scene today. So, um, watching their playing and just seeing how technical they are. That's really inspired us to uh, further push ourselves to become more technical, and just you'll be able to hear a lot of that in our music as well. Well, let's talk about the music. Last year, you guys released the Spontaneous Generation EP with Max Portnoy on drums at the time. Tell us a little bit about that and sort of how you guys have evolved into the debut full-length Medusa. When we first wrote our EP... Uh, we, we wrote it over the course of a few years because my brother and I, we were always throwing riffs at each other. How do you like this? How do you like that? And we, um, when we decided that we actually wanted to record our EP when it was all finished up, we had superior uh, uh, sequence drums on it, and we thought that, oh, we need real drums on this to really, to really give it, um, pull it all together, and it would just, it would just, there's something about real drums that you just can't accomplish with sequence drums. So we uh, contacted Max and Mike Portnoy, and they were um, they were more than happy to uh, have Max fill in out on our first EP. He just played drums for us on the first EP, even though he, he's busy with his full time project. So so that's why we had uh, drum auditions after that. But um, he helped us out by putting tracks on the first EP. Right, Max is, obviously has next to none and everything, and of course you brought in Liam Manley, who's. He's all the way from, like, Portland, Oregon, right? How, how does that whole thing work? Because you guys are in, in New Jersey. Yeah, so um, when we decided we needed a real full-time drummer, we uh, did YouTube auditions, and we actually found Liam on one of our the first days we were looking for drummers. We were looking up, like, technical drum covers, and we, we happened to find Liam's almost right away, so that was very fortunate for us. We contacted him, and within... Uh, after a few phone calls, a few uh, Skype calls, he actually flew out to our house, and we played we played a show with him. It uh, we worked on new songs, we rehearsed the the EP with him, and we decided this is the guy. So now he, for most of the time, he lives at our house in uh, New Jersey. We always rehearse. Uh, we're, we're always rehearsing here, and. Um, now that we're getting ready to go on tour, he's here. He's been here for like the past few months, and it's uh, it's been going great. Now, on the initial EP, if memory serves, it was all instrumental. Since then, in creating Medusa, you guys have both started to sing. Were vocals always a part of the plan, or are you just sort of feeling out as you were creating the direction that you wanted to go with this? Uh, I would say yes to both of those. Um, when we initially started, we wanted to have vocals on um, our music. By the time the first EP had come around, we had we didn't have any intention of putting vocals on that EP. The EP was a little bit of a sampler of everything that we wanted to set out to accomplish musically going forward. 
So um, I think that the, the logical progression from the EP to Medusa is, and you know, a logical progression because it's uh, Medusa is a heavier and um, we added vocals. So even though the, a lot of the stylistic choices are similar, I believe that Medusa, it takes a step towards where we want to go as a band from the EP. For most instrumental bands, there sort of is a limitation on, I guess, a wide appeal to a larger group of people. And we would like to um, have as large of an audience as possible, as well as um, when we were writing Medusa, we wanted to think what's going to translate the best to a live performance setting, which is, which, what we th which is what we think is the most important part of being in a band. You need to have an amazing live show. And that's why we wrote a lot of Medusa how we did, because we knew we wanted harsh vocals, and we knew we wanted it to translate well live, and we think we accomplished what we set out to do, and we're very pleased with our uh, final product. Yeah, it's an excellent album. And you know, that sort of begs the question, now that you've been playing, you did the Catatonia tour, you've been out on the road quite a bit, has that impacted seeing how the songs translate live? Has that sort of impacted how you are going to be writing for the next album? knowing what really works with the crowd. Yeah, yes, it does. Um, but also on the Catatonia tour, we were playing a uh, lighter set right. um, because the, the two bands we were at with Catatonia is um, you know, very progressive, Gothenburg metal, but very very soft. They're not, um, they're not very heavy. And uh, Caspian was a uh, post-hardcore post band or post-rock band. Um, so they were also... They're you know, very atmospheric, um, and uh, we, we wanted to appeal to as many fans on that tour as we could, so we're going to be playing a very different set on the Devil Driver tour than we did on the Catatonia tour. Yeah, I would imagine you have to shuffle your set list a little bit, depending upon who the headliner is anyway. Yeah. And I would imagine now getting out on the road with Devil Driver, playing your heavier stuff, that will give you a better indication of how your material plays in front of the the fans. Oh, definitely, yeah. We also think it's it's good that we could be adaptable with our set, so we, we think we could play with most progressive metal, death metal bands, which we think uh, will help like appeal to a wider audience and uh, help get us in front of different people. As long as we're willing to change the set as often as we need to, we think it'll work out very well. Now, you guys also just released a new track, sort of, <laughs> with Stygian Valley. Tell us a bit about that one, because it's sort of a reworked Stygian pit, but with vocals, if I'm... Yes, yeah, uh, thank you. Stygian Valley is Stygian pit, but with a different structure, and we added vocals to it. Um, so what we were thinking about Stygian Valley is that we needed we needed a heavier version of Stygian pit. So obviously, to make it heavier, we could A, add vocals, and then... B, we restructured the song without losing any portions, but because uh, we knew what we wanted to keep. But um, you know, we had to cut out parts that repeated and things like that. So that process was a unique one for us because we've never actually redone a uh, song that we've made previously. But it went very fluidly. And on Stygian Valley, we had time to um, do a bunch of extra vocal tracks to uh, make the vocals sound better than better than Medusa because we had uh, A, more experience singing, and then B, you know, the ability to really produce the vocals in a unique way. Yeah, as you said, it's leaner and more muscular, and I'm sure it's translating well to the stage. Now, where can fans get that? Because I haven't seen it online at, like, Amazon or any place like that. I'm sure it must be available somewhere. Stygian Valley uh, is available on Spotify for and YouTube for people who like to stream and Apple, and, and Apple Music. It's also available for uh, purchase on iTunes as just a single. It um it has a slightly different album cover of the of the, our Medusa, but just looking in a different direction with a different background. And also we have at our um, all of our upcoming live shows, we will have a uncured sampler CD. That we'll be giving out for free before the show to uh, help promote attendance. And one of the songs on it will be a Stygian Valley. So that'll be, um, and we'll probably have those available on our, our website as well for hard copies. I thought um, I would need to check 
I'll check it out, but I think we it should be on Amazon, so if, the, if it's not, we might need to look into that. Yeah, I was under the impression that it was available on Amazon as well. Yeah, I looked today and I couldn't find it because I was going to download it to play it on my show this weekend, but I'll find it. So. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We appreciate that. So, and, and you alluded to this a moment ago, your sort of a futuristic Medusa artwork. I really like that. Who, who came up with the concept and created that for you? Uh, our bassist, John Keita, he was at an art show in New York City, and he saw it was art similar to our Medusa because it was by a very famous Austrian artist named Peter Grick, and he said, wow, that's sick, and we would love to have, because we were looking for album art ideas at the time, and we thought we'd love to have something that just looks metal like that. So we got in contact with the artist. We, we collaborated with him in order to make our own um, sort of Medusa-looking robotic structure as he made for us. And then once we got that, John did all the final touches in Photoshop for coloring, scenery, and we were thrilled with how it came out. So we're very happy about it. Yeah, it's a fantastic album cover, and obviously it ties into the whole Medusa theme for the album, but are you going to carry over that image or sort of mascot, if you will, to future projects, or is it just limited to this record? Uh, we don't have the intention of reusing that um, that uh, character gotcha. um, or that image in future albums, but uh, yeah, we do have already three different variations of, I'm sorry, more than that, because... On our cabinets, when we play live, we have her face looking in towards the drums on each of them. And on the kick drum, we have a different image of her face. So it, it is kind of a mascot currently, yeah. um, just for this album cycle, though. Now, one of my favorite tracks on the album is Petrified. I love the funky intro, and you guys, I'm going to be dating myself here. But as my friend and I were talking about, it sounds like it's almost got like this little 70s porn film groove that's kind of funky at the beginning there. But it really works within the structure of the song. Yeah, thank you. We've had uh, we've heard similar comments to that, and that's sort of what we were aiming to achieve with that section. It's sort of it's got that even sort of like a creepy little feel to it. And uh, I'm glad you really uh, I'm glad you really like that song because that's also one of my uh, that's also one of my favorites because of all the different things we have going on there. So I'm glad you uh, you, you um, appreciated that. Thank you. Absolutely. Now. And this is weird, because I'm a guitarist myself, never on the level that you guys are, but do you feel like the two of you each have your own distinctive style of play, or do you think you more closely resemble each other's style, because obviously you've grown up playing together? I think that uh, we have fairly u unique styles in guitar playing, uh, not so much in in like in like riffage, because we always work on riffs together, um, and... I guess I guess in terms of creating writing riffs, we have slightly different approaches. Um, that that is always the master of coming up with the big grooves, and um, I always like the more technical things. So we we have worked very well together in that regard, um, as as kind of translates to the music, um, you know, with the big grooves mixed in with the technical stuff. And then on um, on lead playing, I guess we have uh, different styles, and that's just more so of the struggles that we take and the, like, what we're playing over a lot of times. Like, depending on the backing, it kind of structures how the solo is going to progress. And I guess the way that we divide them up is more conducive to our styles. Now, as we mentioned uh, earlier, you guys just wrapped up a tour with Catatonia, and you're getting ready to head out on the road with Devil Driver, and then probably the tour that melds best with your sound after that this fall with Children of Bodom. That is a fantastic way to start your guys' touring life. I mean, most bands go four or five years before they get that many great tours. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we've been uh, very lucky to to have these three great opportunities in a row, and it's, it's doing a great job to help make a name for the band right out of the box, which uh, you know, we hope to use that momentum and, and keep it going after the Bodum Tour. Yeah, so we are, we're definitely very excited on to get on both of those tours, and you know, meet, meet a lot of different fans because the fans that go to Cat Tony shows are pretty different than the fans that go to Devil Driver shows. And then the boat, um, as you said, is probably going to be the most compatible with our music. So um, it's going to be great to go from Cat Tonya, which is a lighter band, Devil Driver, which is just all classic American groove, and then Children of Bodom, which is, you know, progressive, progressive death metal. 
I'm really sort of excited to hear what the next full length is going to sound like. And I know you guys have already started writing some of the music for it. But I think after these tours this summer and fall, I think that's going to have some influence and impact on what the rest of the writing will be like. Uh, yes, I agree that uh, we're going to have... I mean, we have some material already now. And um, just going on those two tours is going to... We're going to learn even more about how things translate because the next two tours are more of a moshing crowd, in my opinion. So, um, you know, just learning learning how to just help get the pit going faster and keep it going longer is yeah. always a good thing. Well, and I think, too, you sort of can't help when you're out with bands of that caliber that you respect, that you can't help but be inspired as writers. Yes, yeah, Absolutely. All right, so before we get out of here, just for fun, when you guys actually have some downtime, what television series are you guys currently binge-watching? I just finished Blue Mountain State. Um, that was a pretty good show. And I've moved on to uh, bodybuilding documentaries. So <laughs> between those two, uh, that's what I've been watching. For me, I usually I tend to watch the same show, but in different, just a different <laughs> format every time. But it's always like the same plot. So I just, it's, I, when I, I always find myself watching a post-apocalyptic thing where only a certain amount of people can live, and I've watched that type of show like five or six times in a row. He doesn't get tired of it. It's great. <laughs> is, is there a particular one that's like been your favorite so far? I don't, the one I just finished before was called V100, which is still, there's like four seasons out and a new one's coming out, so I'll, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, like after a big whole world destruction, there's only a few people left and they need to uh, come back, but there's always like a lot of monsters and stuff. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do yeah. it. We rock. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for taking some time. The debut album, Medusa, is fantastic. Huge tours coming up. We're excited to see you on the road. And maybe after the tours are over, we'll get on the phone and chat again and see how it all went. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thank you for taking the time to um, interview us and taking interest in the band.